Good evening, everyone. Sorry, it's been a little bit since I've been able to make a video. I've been pretty busy. Um, I know my goal is to try to make at least one or two a week. I did get a movie review up. It wasn't very good, so I didn't really publish it. I mean, I didn't really talk about it, but it is published, so if you want to get out there and watch that, you can. Um, what we're going to do on this video is we're going to talk about winners and losers of the last week. And this is going to span through most of the sports. We're going to talk a little bit about MMA, and we are also going to talk about NFL. Before we get started, I just do want to thank everyone for watching these videos. If you get a chance, please subscribe below. Also, like these videos, comments on them. I do want this to be interactive. Also, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, S15designs.com. If you haven't checked them out, please do so. I am wearing one of their workout shirts. Show you all this one. So they do have quite a few of these workout shirts. You can get them online, S15designs.com. It is hoodie weather, so it's a great time to get your custom hoodie made. Now let's get into our winners and losers. Our number one winner of the week is going to be our undefeated NFL teams. There are two teams remaining. We have Carolina and we have New England. New England played a really close game. They actually won by a point. Tom Brady did play pretty well. He was 26 of 42. He had two touchdowns, one interception, which puts him up to 24 and three for the year. Tom Brady, Tom Brady again played pretty decent football this last weekend. But even better than that, he was able to lead his team to victory through a pretty close match. In fact, I believe if I'm correct, the last four games before this one, they had lost to New York. So it was good to see Tom Brady step up, lead his team the way he's done this entire year and he's done in his, his entire career. It's good to see them stay undefeated. Um, bad news, though, for New England is Julian Edelman went out with a broken bone in his foot, and they're saying that he's going to be out for the season. Uh, it looks like it's the same injury that... Des Bryant had, so maybe Elliman will be able to be back for the postseason. Um, I would like to see him come back the week before, keep him eligible to play. Also, I want to talk about Gronk. Did anyone see his 76-yard catch for a touchdown, the longest one of his career? Who's playing great football? Gronkowski's playing great football. New England overall had a good game. They won by one point, but a win is a win. The second team is Carolina who is led by what I still believe is the MVP of the NFL so far, and that is Mr. Cam Newton. They went and they defeated the team that they were playing, and Cam Newton had a pretty good game. He went 21 of 26. He had another rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown. Greg Olson was a beast in this game, and I know I've said my opinions about Greg Olson, but it does look like he's getting better, so maybe my opinion of him not being a top five may have to come back. I still think he's top 10. I just don't think he's top five. Um, but he is playing great football this year, and so is Cam Newton. It is great to see Carolina for the first time in their franchise history start off the way that they have, undefeated. And so it's good to see that, 9-0 for Carolina. So keep up the good work there in Carolina. The second winner of the week would be Miss Holly Holmes. Did anyone get to catch that fight this weekend? She actually knocked out Ronda Rousey in the second round with a left kick to the face head area that sent Rousey down to the mat. She followed up with two punches before Herb Dean stopped the fight. Holly Holmes fought a great fight, and I will tell you, I'll be the first one to say I did not expect her to win. And I didn't expect her to win because I was actually wrong about her record. I said that she's only had about four knockouts in her, in her career, which is wrong. I actually did some research, and overall, between boxing, MMA, and kickboxing, she has 51 wins with 18 knockouts. That means she knocks out 36% of the people she fights. She knocks them out. That's a pretty good stat. So I was wrong, so Holly, I do apologize for having those stats wrong, but it was a great fight. Rousey got out of her game plan from the beginning of the fight, and Holly Holmes did exactly what she needed to do. She was the boxer, she played great defense, and she had better striking this game. In this fight, she had better striking. She had better counter striking, her kicks were better, and overall, it was a game plan that she used that beat Ronda Rousey. Will they fight again? Of course. Can she beat Ronda Rousey again? Maybe. Maybe not. I feel Ronda Rousey will get better. Um, I feel Holly Holmes can get better. However, I think Rousey will be able to figure out how to use her judo a little bit better in the second fight. 
bring this fight down to the ground, be able to get that arm bar in. I know Holly Holmes was able to defend it once in this last fight. I just don't know that she can beat her back to back. In a best of three, the way Holly fought last time, there's no reason why she couldn't be in her best of three. However, I feel when it comes to fight number two, I would put my money again on Rousey, only because I think Rousey has more to prove. A true champion isn't defined by necessarily just their wins. I feel they're also defined by what they do after they lose. Muhammad Ali has lost, and he came back even stronger. I want to see Rousey do the same thing. My other winner, my number three winner of the week, is Johnny Manziel. And it's not for your typical reason that I thought that he was absolutely amazing this week. I felt that he played a good game. I felt even the week before he played a good game. Why he is a winner this week is because he is the new starter of the Cleveland Browns. Now, I have a friend who is a big Cleveland Browns fan. He goes, well, we'll see how that goes. Now, here is why I think Johnny Manziel should be the starter. I feel that the Browns need to either decide this is the one they're going to go with Give him the reps with the first team. Give him that play time to see if he can improve. He's played decent football the last two weeks. He's made improvements. Yes, he's missing some of those reads. Yes, he could stay in the pocket more. But he is getting better. And I feel like for Johnny Manziel, if he's not going to sit the entire season and learn from Josh McCown, his best option is to learn on the field. And so I'm excited to see him play the remainder of the season. I think that he could have a decent shot of really improving through each game and becoming the quarterback that they expected to have when they first drafted Johnny Manziel. So Johnny Manziel was my number three winner of the week and my number four winner of the week is Washington. The Washington Redskins. What a game. Wow. Kirk Cousins went 20 of 25 with four touchdowns and zero interceptions. Keep it up. I wasn't the one who would say Kirk Cousins was the greatest when he started. However, I feel that he's done exactly what he needed to do. He's improved every week. And that's been no different. So great job, Kirk Cousins. Great job, Washington. Now let's talk a little bit about the losses this week. My number one in the losses category for winners and losers is Ronda Rousey. 12-1. and one. She was one of the most dominant champions the UFC had had. And I feel like she'll be up there again. However, she needs not to allow this one loss to define her career. Did she expect to win? Of course. However, if you remember, she did predict a head kick knockout in Jimmy Kimmel. So she kind of predicted the finish that happened. I am intrigued to see them fight again. I don't, I don't think they're going to fight again until UFC 200. I think you're going to see Ronda Rousey take some time away. I feel that she needs that time, especially when you were the character and at the level that she was doing interviews, being in essence, a lot of it, the face of women's sports for the last two and a half years. It is taxing on a person um, being in the limelight like that. I think she'll take the rest. I think she'll come back better. I think that you'll see that her and Holly Holmes will have a best of three contest and we'll see who wins those. This could be the next best rivalry that we have in sports. So that's my first loser. My second one, Andy Dalton. In the prime time of last night's game, he couldn't lead his team to victory. He didn't play overly bad, but he didn't play great. He was 22 of 38 with zero touchdowns. That's unacceptable. If you want to be a winning quarterback, you have to be able to get the touchdowns. And he wasn't able to do that this week. He wasn't. He did throw one interception. And so I want to see Andy Dalton step back up. I have been high on Andy Dalton, and I'm still high on Andy Dalton. I don't think that this one loss defines who he is. However, he needs to be able to get into the limelight, be able to get into those Monday night games, into the playoff games, and do well. I said that a few weeks back, that I want to see how you do in the playoffs. I want to see how you do in the, the limelight, in those big games, those Monday night games, those Sunday night football games. So I feel like he has a lot to learn. And I feel like he's developing in the right way. However, this was a, a step back for him. So let's see Andy Dalton do better this week, next week. My third loser of the week is Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. For the first time since Aaron Rodgers have been drafted, he's lost three games in a row. Is that a cause for concern? I think it is. I think Aaron Rodgers has some things that 
him and his team need to work on, not necessarily him alone, because he was 35 and 61. He threw 200, or I'm sorry, he has he threw two touchdowns and zero interceptions. He didn't play a bad football game. The Green Bay Packers have a lot to worry about. I think they were the loser this week. I don't know if you'll see that the offensive coordinating and the offensive play calling will go back to the head coach or if they'll stay on the person they hired this year. But the Green Bay Packers need to be careful. They have the potential to lose four in a row. They have potential to slip out of the playoff race. I want to see them bounce back because I want to see a competitive football game. And the last loser of my week would be Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning is your 30th ranked quarterback. He broke the passing uh, record this last week and then threw four interceptions. He needs to sit. You have Brock Oswaller who came in and played, played a decent game, but he needs to be the guy to lead the team for the next couple weeks. Um, They said that Peyton Manning has torn his plantar fasciitis. My whole thing is bench him, let him heal, save him for the playoffs, use his mind, use his ability to help coach Brock up. I always said that his legacy probably won't be defined by his championship rings. I mean, Peyton Manning only has one. But this is one of the things that is going to define his legacy, how well he can help Brock Osweiler become the next quarterback for the Denver Broncos. How can he help lead Brock? How can he do these things? Those are what people are going to ask. And I feel like Peyton has the ability to do all of them. He is a genius when it comes to reading defenses. So if he can help uh, Brock do those things, I feel like you will see his legacy be even better than what it is on the football field. Those are my winners and losers of this week. I'm hoping to have another video up tomorrow talking about the NBA games that are going on tonight. I'm trying to make this diverse. I apologize for the long wait, but thank you all for watching this video. Have a great evening.